Tonight we will hear Hymn to the Earth. This will be the global premiere of Hymn to the Earth. Actually, it's the galactic premiere uh, <laughs> of um, Hymn to the Earth, featuring the world premiere of Ozymandias to Sell a Planet by composer Drew Heminger. Uh, Drew was really inspired uh, for this piece by the Colorado we love, the world we love, uh, and of course, being awake and aware of the dangers that it faces. Our way of life, our public lands, our majestic mountains, our golden plains. It asks us to re-examine our role in the world and the role we should all play in protecting sacred life. Our fellow humans, fellow animals, plants, ecosystems, our planet itself. And it's a call to action. Uh, in many ways, a warning of what could happen if we fail to achieve our climate goals. As Coloradans, we can certainly be proud of leading the way on climate. Uh, as a state, we'll be at 80% renewable energy in just seven and a half more years, uh, combating climate change, improving air quality, protecting water and natural resources. But the work uh, isn't just about policies or laws that are signed. Uh, it's, it's really about our collective responsibility to protect our planet, to protect our future for ourselves and our children. And tonight's performance is one of many in a long line of performances uh, in the name of, of driving positive change. You know, for all of us, music really helps us feel. Uh, it's more powerful in many ways than, than thinking. It reminds us that we're in this together, it brings us together, it summons our spirits. And listening to music together with others in an audience uh, of hundreds is a transformative collective experience that we can share with another and also inspires us all to greater action. Uh, and so tonight, uh, uh, we look forward to sharing that experiencing experience with all of you uh, and kicking off the 2022-2023 season of the Boulder Philharmonic. Thank you. Uh, you if I could, to our composer this evening, his name is Drew Heminger. And Drew, are you there? If you're there, I see you there. Come on out and join us for a moment, if you would. This is Drew Heminger. You know what, you can use my microphone, Drew. So, there he is. So welcome, first of all. Yeah, come on up. I'll, I'll stand down here. This is really about you. Uh, I want to uh, just basically let you tell us a little bit about this piece. So I, I suggested this, this um, rather short poem by Shelley. I thought maybe you could set it for maybe a singer and a uh, piano or something like this. And here we have a five, min, uh, five movement, rather, environmental oratorio with all sorts of different texts and sources of the, tell us a little bit about the arch or the, the, the journey that we're going to take this evening. Yeah, I kind of took your idea and really ran, like really ran with it. Right? Like a long way. Yeah, a long yeah. way. <laughs> um, well, first I just want to thank you and the orchestra for supporting this project through many hurdles, such as um, this little dramatic thing over the last two years, the pandemic, um, but here we are. Here we are indeed, yes, for sure. So um, this begins with some uh, tr transition into English of Native American uh, text, correct? Yes, um, well, you want me to just give a quick, yeah, would you, would let me you? give you a quick summary. So we, we have five movements. I mean, the short summary is before we messed up the earth, what we're doing to the earth now and what will happen if we don't do something about it. That's the short version. Yes. The longer version is in five movements. Um, so we start, the first movement is a, uh, kind of a celebration of the earth when it was under the stewardship of the Native Americans. So we have a text by Chief Sitting Bull, The Spring Has Come. The second movement is William Wordsworth's The World Is Too Much With Us, a kind of a dark, um, kind of mystical, dark poem about the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution. So there we have kind of, it's, it's the beginning of the idea of profiting off of the land. Right. Um, yeah. And then a piece just for the orchestra. In then the, the third movement is orchestra alone, which um, you know the orchestra has some stuff to say by themselves. Uh, and that movement is really my sort of homage to Ravel's the Le Valse. And Le Valse is a piece about uh, the Weimar Republic. So it's it's kind of like a society, a decadent society on the edge of collapse, kind of partying like it's 1999, and uh, not worrying about what's going to happen next. 
which brings us, of course, to the fourth movement. So Michael said to me in one of our conversations, hey, Drew, um, science is big and bolder. How about you incorporate the IPCC climate change report? Um, which is, <laughs> that was my reaction. Yeah. I think so, I was kidding, actually, but. Uh, oh, my God, now you tell me. No, no, you no, no, no. <laughs> uh, so if you don't know what that is, it's the International Panel on Climate Change. And these, this panel does these periodic, really exhaustive reports that are used by policymakers, um, and all sorts of organizations use them to, to develop their plans on, on how to, to react to what's happening. So I'm thinking, how am I going to do this? Um, and I'm not going to tell you. You'll find out in a few minutes. Um, in addition, I also included uh, Greta, a little bit of excerpts from Greta Thunberg, the uh, Swedish uh, young teenage climate activist, some text from her speech to the UN, and uh, Chief Tecumseh, who is a Shawnee leader who has made this famous speech called Sell a Country. He's from the Ohio region originally, and I'm from Ohio, so that was a little homage to my hometown. And finally, we get to the last movement, Ozymandias, which is uh, another 19th century poem, like uh, The World is Too Much With Us by Shelley, Percy Shelley, uh, which was Michael's original idea. And Ozymandias was originally uh, about um, the pharaoh, and it's, an, it's sort of the idea of air, human arrogance, which is connected to this whole concert, and had nothing to do with climate change. But in, in the end of the poem, this uh, crumbling statue of this pharaoh who thought himself a god uh, is crumbling into the desert, and there's, there's nothing there. So I, I view it as kind of post-apocalyptic warning to us that if we don't change our ways, this is where we could end up, and there we are. So, so enjoy, right? Enjoy, yeah. yeah. Now you know what to, now you know what to expect. All right. Thank you so much, Drew. Looking forward to it. Yeah. All right. All right.
human influence on the climate system is clear, and recent anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases are the highest in history. Recent climate changes have had widespread impacts on human and natural systems. Since the beginning of the industrial era, oceanic uptake of CO2 has resulted in acidification of the ocean. The pH of ocean surface water has decreased by 0.1. Corresponding to a 26% increase in acidity, measured as hydrogen ion concentration. Projected thawing of permafrost is expected to increase the loss of soil carbon. High confidence! During the 21st century, vegetation growth in those areas may compensate in part for this loss. No confidence! It is virtually certain that there will be more frequent hot and fewer cold temperature extremes over most land areas on daily and seasonal timescales as global mean surface temperature increases. It is very likely that heat waves will occur with higher frequency and longer duration. Occasional cold weather extremes will continue to occur. In urban areas, climate change is projected to increase risks for people, assets, economies, and ecosystems, including risks from heat stress, storms, and extreme precipitation, inland and coastal flooding, landslides, air pollution, drought, water scarcity, sea level rise, and storm surges. Very high comments. These risks are amplified for those lacking essential infrastructure or services. Or living in exposed areas. Oh, my God. 